Um, let me see, got it. All right, if we're ready, we can uh, start the meeting. What do you think, Greg? Good to go? Yeah, it's fine. All right, I will call the meeting to order at 6.32. And just as one of the announcements, this is a, a uh, being a Zoom meeting. If we have technical issues, please stay with us. We will try to fix them and then resume the meeting. If we're not able to, then we'll have to repost the meeting and um, and then schedule it for another time. I have to uh, see. So, um, so with that said, I'll take a quick uh, roll call vote. We have uh, Greg Snedeker. Present. I'll just go through quick. Michelle? Present. Renee? <clears throat> Present. Jennifer? Here. Karen? Here. Uh, Raina? Here. Uh, David? David, are you frozen? No, he's there. Okay, he's there. Uh, Deb Bloomer? Here. And Dorinda? Here. And myself, Alan Genovese, uh, because it's being recorded. We have uh, two guests with us, our consultants. We have Matt and Mark Abrams from the Abrams Group. And uh, we're going to move them right to the top of the agenda so that uh, we can focus on their financial report. And um, just to give you a heads up, we were able to have a meeting with them yesterday, Greg and I, just to go over uh, how they would be proceed in the um, presentation. And very impressed that they were able to uh, put together slides that sort of outlines uh, the report, which will be helpful in going through uh, tonight's meeting. So um, kudos to you too for being able to pull this together so we can look at some slides and help guide us here. So with that said, um, I'll turn it over to who, who's going to start? I'll start. Okay. Mark, you wanna, uh, do you wanna have present? Yeah, I'm gonna present very briefly. Okay, let me, uh, I'm gonna make you, host. I'll make you co-host. Uh, can you make Matt a co-host too? Yep. Well, good evening, everyone. I see some familiar faces, and I see some new faces. Uh, I'm going to show you br very briefly. First, uh, this is the PowerPoint. You do not have this. This will be available up on the website, or Greg can send it to you later. Uh, but we thought it would be easier if we had a PowerPoint to walk you through all of this. Uh, this is supported by an Excel workbook that I'll just call up in a minute. And this is what Alan was referring to with respect to a lot of data. Uh, it's not our intent to go through the data in this level of detail, but I just want to show you, if you look on the bottom here, there are a significant number of tabs that give you the underlying data that we're using in this report and PowerPoint. And then as Alan referred to, we have the report, uh, which is a narrative of our scope, our methodology, and the key results for what we were asked to do. So we have those available for the backup. And we're back to the PowerPoint. There we go. 
So I'm going to spend a few moments just outlining the scope, and then Matt will walk you through uh, the details and the results. Um, we're asked to put together a six-town region from a budget point of view. With the updated salary schedule for a merged district. So you have existing salaries in the existing budgets. Pull the two regions together, take out the old salaries, put in the new salaries based on the merged salary schedule. And we were able to accommodate the Gil Montague's recently approved salary schedule a couple of weeks ago. Uh, number two, to take the health insurance plans and merge them together. And to analyze the cost differences to move the active employees to one district's plan. Uh, this resulted in a choice down the road. The Gil Montague and Pioneer Valley plans are quite different, and therefore there is a cost swing of about seven hundred thousand, four hundred thousand one way, three hundred thousand savings in another way. Um, we took the higher cost to present to you a worst case scenario. Number three, take the two central offices and merge them together, which would result in a savings, and take the two district budgets, put in the new salaries from the merged salary schedule, put in the health insurance plan from a merged health insurance schedule, and then reduce that by the merged central office savings. That gives us a budget, gross budget, which then we took the common revenues and subtracted that from the gross budget to get to an, a net amount to be assessed. And the planning board asked us to do about 11 or 12 assessments. Uh, one set with a six town district, one set with a five town district, and within each set, five specific assessments that you called us, that you instructed us to do, and then one that was up to our choice. So with that, I will turn it over to Matt, who will walk you through the rest of the presentation. Did anyone have any questions on the overview in terms of um, what we had asked uh, the Abraham the Abrams group <clears throat> to do? Yeah, Alan, my, my only question is I was curious, um, the explanation about Warwick and the uh, explanation of Warwick is now a separate district. Um, so are you assuming that Warwick is going to want to come back in to make it a six-town district? Or do you anticipate it really staying at a five-town district? We were asked to run a set of scenarios with a six-town district, including Warwick, and a five-town scenario excluding Warwick. So those are the numbers you're gonna to see tonight. Okay. So to uh, elaborate on Mark's answer, um, I wanna be clear, uh, Warwick had no intention. They really did not wanna leave the Pioneer School District. They, they tried many ways to remain in the district and that just didn't happen. So uh, they they wanted to have a school open that that wasn't going to happen. And so eventually um, they ran out of options. So uh, to be more specific, uh, having said that, they're very interested in, in uh, knowing uh, what that would be if they were part of a, of, of a six town regional district. 
in the same way that they would have uh, been interested in continuing with Pioneer if they could have had their school remain open. Okay. District, Warwick would basically be like an Irving, which would then but, tuition in their students. Yes, yes, if they were not part of that, or there's a scenario that maybe they regionalize seven through 12, which we didn't ask them to do. Um, so we thought we would keep this focused on a six town and a five town and what that would look like. All right, thank you. And also, at, oh, go ahead, Alan. Well, I was gonna say at the time we were doing this, we didn't we didn't have all the all the information uh, that we that we needed. So um, we had more now when we were writing the RFQ. David. You're on David, we can't hear you. David? It's not on mute. We just can't hear him. David, we can't hear you. Can't, I don't know if you can hear me telling you we can't hear you. <laughs> can you hear us? Okay, we we cannot hear you at all. Check your microphone settings, David. Oh, we're waiting on David. I just want to make a quick point. So the tuition expenses that were just referenced for Warwick, that those expenses are already part of the Warwick budget. It's in the FY24 budget, FYI, the tuition expenses. David, can you put it in the chat, maybe? Well, I, I don't know if it was a question. I think it might have been a, a comment. We'll give him another minute, and then we'll continue. We can always come back to him. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Um, so was, am I right to assume that Irving was not in this at all uh, factored in? either like Warwick or they're not gonna be considered one of the towns involved in this? Their their contribution was not considered, is that a true statement? That That's a true statement, yes. We did not factor them into the five town or the six town. However, they're, they do contribute in that they have tuition. The, the districts receive tuition revenue today from, from Irving. So they do factor in in a way. They just don't factor in as a member town in the analysis that in the in what we ran. I will say that when we presented uh, to the school committee, <clears throat> there were there was a, a great turnout of uh, people that uh, were there to um, to ask questions, and they're very interested in their their children's education. And uh, so some of their questions, you know. Uh, geared to because they're they're in a state of flux at the moment in terms of what's what's happening there so potentially that could be a possibility my perspective has been and I think I said this if this were to ever to come to pass it'd be a matter of um a, a, a an amendment to an original agreement between the school committees if, if some other uh, district or uh, school district wanted to come into the six town becomes a seven town or whatever, because we've put all the building blocks in place. So without getting too far aside, David, if we have, if you haven't resolved your problem, we'll, maybe he signed out to come back in. So he, did, he did say in the chat that it was okay to move on. Okay. All right. You're on there, Matt. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Matt Abraham. It's part of the Abraham group. I just tried to share the PowerPoint on my computer. Can you just confirm that you can see a white screen that says project scope on it? Yep. Okay, thank you. So this is the slide that, that Mark just presented a moment ago, um, and we'll move into the, the remaining slides in the slide presentation that we have for you this evening now. I can figure out how to do that. There we go. Okay, so this slide is related to the new salary schedule. This is one of the things that we were asked to look at. Um, 
the way that we started this process was to look at the existing salary schedules for the two regions today. And when I say today, I'm talking about the one for the the one the salary schedules for the current fiscal year, which is FY24. So we analyzed Gil Montagues, we analyzed Pioneer Valleys. Um, Gil Montagues was not available until very recently because of negotiations that were ongoing for an extended period of time. And they just settled, at least pre preliminarily, on a contract that allowed them to up their teachers' pay to FY24 standards for them. They have been carrying an FY22 salary schedule in the meantime. So that was that was a nice development in the work that we were doing and the timing was good. Um, it preceded this meeting by a week or two, but we were able to get that that information in here. So we were able to work off of the latest salary schedule information available <clears throat> for both districts. Um, as you may be aware, Gil Montague's salaries for its teachers are generally higher in terms of salaries just being higher than Pioneer Valley's teachers' um, salaries. And we did factor that in. So um, what we ended up doing was creating a new salary schedule for the merge district, but it very much re re reflects Gil Montague's FY24 salary schedule. So we basically started with Gil Montague's schedule and then tweaked it such that every teacher, every Gil Montague teacher, every Pioneer Valley teacher would not make less than they make today in the current school year if they were to transition to this new salary schedule. We had to tweak one step in the bachelor's lane, step one, just to get that salary up a little bit so that one of the Pioneer Valley teachers' salaries did not go down. And then also we had to think a, a little bit harder on how to handle Pioneer Valley's step 15 teachers. There are many step 15 teachers in Pioneer Valley today. Gil Montague's salary schedule does not go up to step 15. It goes up to step 12. That's their highest. Um, so if you were to transition all step 15 teachers for Pioneer Valley over step 12, the numbers don't work. They would be making less than they make today. So our solution to do that was to create two additional steps, a step 13 and a step 14, if you will, and just increase those salaries in each step by an average going upward on the steps. So if you average out step one to step two, two to three, three to four, et cetera, all the way out to step 12, use that average increase to create the new, the new steps, step 13 and 14. And we did need to do that all the way out to 14 in order to ensure that those teachers did not make less. I will show you the um, salary schedule which we, that we came up with on the next slide. It was also in the report. But once we moved everybody over, we have additional costs equaling just about $202,000. So if you were to look at what the teachers make today in both districts, Total those up, compare that to what they would make on this new salary schedule. The difference is about $202,000 additional. And here's the new salary schedule. I highlighted in orange any, any of those steps that were different than Gil Montague's FY24 salary schedule, just so you're aware. And again, um, Gil Montague's schedule does not have step 13 and 14 plus have been added for the reasons that I mentioned, that's step M and step N. Yeah. So I'm going to continue on with these slides, but if there was a question or comment, I'm, I'm happy to stop for a little bit to talk about that. Um, so now we're transitioning to the next piece, which is health, health insurance plans. Mark mentioned this earlier. Um, So uh, health insurance plans. Um, so just like we did with the salary schedules, we looked at the different insurance plans for both the districts today, trying to figure out what it would look like if employees from one district transitioned to the plans for the other district and vice versa, if they transition the other direction. We analyzed both. And what we found was that generally from a, an employee employer perspective or district perspective, Gil Montague's plans are more expensive. 
Um, so if you were to push, if we were to move employees from Pioneer Valley over to Gil Montague, costs will go up for that reason. And that's what we have in the table before you on this slide. This slide represents that situation where we're assuming that all Pioneer Valley's active employees move to Gil Montague's plans. And Gil Montague has a fairly lengthy roster of options for insurance plans. So we had to think about which one we would choose in that case. And we ended up choosing the one that is most popular. Meaning if you were to look at how many employees are signed up for those plans, we went with the one where employees were signed up for the most. In other words, the most popular ones. And that was Health New England um, for both for the HMO, both uh, individual and family. And it was one of the Harvard Pilgrim plans for a PPO. So you can see on, the, on this table, the left-hand side represents the Pioneer Valley um, employees with Pioneer Valley plans. The right-hand side represents what they would, what those costs would be for those individuals if they were to move over to the Gil Montague plans. And you can also see the rate and the, the district share on both sides. That's a good way of understanding the differences between the cost from an employer perspective. So for example, if you were to look at um, the HMO single, the first row, the rate is $658 today. That's a, a total premium. The district share is 75%. The total premium on a Gil Montague is 735, but the district share is 90%. So the premium is higher and the district share is higher. That'll give you a sense of why the costs go up in this scenario. So this results in about 411,000 additional costs. So again, that's comparing the current situation to the combined district. And the next slide is the opposite direction. If we were to shift Gil Montague's active employees over to Pioneer Valley's plans, the, the table's bigger because the Gil Montague employees today have different, more, um, different additional, that's the word I'm looking for, more plans selected today than Pioneer Valley does. Um, so we wanted to represent that in this table. But as I already mentioned on the prior slide, Pioneer Valley's plans are simply just um, less expensive for the district. So in this case, we see a cost saving of almost $379,000. So that's a pretty big swing. And Mark mentioned that earlier in his, his introductory comments that we, we are assuming worst case scenario. So we're assuming that the Pioneer Valley active employees would shift to Gil Montague's plans. But if it were to go in the opposite direction, that would represent a cost saving. Are either of these GIs, I mean, I know Hamp, that Pioneer is on uh, Hampshire Insurance Group. Is the other one a GIC plan? Because we all have to take GIC or prove why we're not doing it, that we're saving money. Uh, Gil Montague was on a GIC plan that I know because I'm on it. Okay. Thank you. I, and, I, and, and these these tables are are considering employer costs, not plan costs. Is that right? No this this table represents the rate is the the total premium. Okay. And then we have the share, which would represent the district's share of the total premium. So, for example, the first row you would take ninety percent of that seven thirty five to get the district share. Okay. All right, moving on. All right, combined central office. Um, two central offices today for both districts. Uh, not, if you were to combine them, it wouldn't have the same makeup as it does today. So what would what would a um, combined one look like? And we, we uh, reached out to district staff just to get a sense of what they thought a combined central office should look like and got some pretty good feedback. So this list in this table represents a collaboration between us and them to come up with what a combined central office should look like in a, in a merged district. And you can see the different positions listed here with an estimated salary for, for, um, for the positions listed. 
total is about $2.1 million. Um, I don't have the figure in on the slide for what the central office's staff salaries are today, but um, it is higher than that amount. And that represents a cost savings of about $317,000 that you can see here. So budget for emerged district. Um, how do we take the existing budgets today and get down to what a budget would look like in a merged district, both a five town and a six town? That's what this slide represents. Um, what we ended up doing was we just took the budgets as is. And I'm talking about general fund budgets only right now. Took the budget from Gil Montague, took the budget from Pioneer Valley, added them together. Then we added in the adjustments that we've already talked about. And that's what this first table represents. So we saw the $202,000-ish related to the teachers moving to the, well, it says to the Gil Montague scale. That's not accurate. It's to a scale for the, the new district, but like the Gil Montague scale. Additional cost of $202,000. The additional costs moving to the Gil Montague plans for health insurance of about $411,000. And the savings shown on the prior slide for the central office of about 317,000, which represents net increase of about $296,000. Now, if we think about back to the health insurance slide slides a moment ago, um, we saw a, a a pretty big swing. If if we were to move the employees from the Gil Montague plans the Pioneer Valley plans, that represents a cost savings of about 379000 I think it was. So that's a difference of almost $800,000. So if, if that were to happen, then this would not be a net increase. That table would not be a net increase of 296000 It ended up being a net decrease of whatever that number is, somewhere 500000 ish So something to keep in the back of your mind, that this is the worst case scenario. We have the cost going up in a merger but it could very well swing in the other direction depending on some of the decisions that are made once the time comes for that. So on the left-hand side down at the bottom is the table for the five town district, how we came up with the budget. Add the two to get, add the two budgets today together, make the adjustments for the, uh, for the merger, and then you get your total district budget total. On the right-hand side is the six town, basically the same calculation, but we have Warwick in there as well. That 725000 ish for the Warwick budget is not the full budget today. Full budget today is low over a million dollars, as I understand it. We took out the tuition that expense that um, goes to Pioneer Valley today because that wouldn't happen in a merged district. So that's why the number is a little bit lower. Just wanted you to be aware of that. Next slide. Did, How did, they... did the five town reflect to Warwick paying tuition as Irving pays tuition? The five yes. pound model pick that up. Okay. Yes, but but that prior slide is is expenses only. So this slide reflects. Um. I, yeah. yeah, this slide reflects it. This slide right here, because this slide is the revenue slide. And some of the labeling got um, a little crossed over here, so I apologize for that. Um, but you can the two tables are these two boxes represent the same line. So you can see the labels on the right-hand side if you wanna know what they represent on the left-hand side. So for the five town, so this would basically be combining the revenues from uh, the two districts today. That's what represent is represented on the five, on the five town box, about $16 million. For the six town, um, combining what it is today, also adding in Warwick, but reducing the tuition you'll see that the tuition line is a little bit lower um, in the six town box on the right because of the reasons I already mentioned. Um, Warwick, Warwick would not be sending tuition that it sends today. So the tuition revenue would be a little less than it is today. But I think everything else is the same except for adding in uh, the chapter 78 for Warwick, which is on the right hand side. Um, then down at the bottom, I know the label is a little bit in the way here, uh, but how we come up with the amount to be assessed, we take the total district budget for that we saw on the prior slide for both the five town and the six town, and we reduce that 
by the total revenues, which are shown here in these boxes, to get the amount to be assessed. So for the five town, it's about 22.6 million. For the six town, it's about 23.3 million. Assessment time. Okay, now we know what we need, what the amount to, to be assessed is. How are we going to assess those amounts? We were asked to run six different assessment methodologies. Um, I just want to comment real quick that we did not factor in capital assessments. Um, capital assessments are done a little bit differently than operating assessments for both districts today. Um, we did recreate that in our analysis, but the capital assessments, in my opinion, were were negligible and we didn't think we needed to include them because of the amounts that they are today. I think um, Gil Montague was about 170,000 and in uh, Pioneer Valley it's 55,000. So those numbers were small enough that we didn't feel like we need, needed to worry about them. And we focused on operating and transportation only. Um, so the six different methodologies that we were asked to run, um, the first one is Gil Montague's operating assessment methodology today, which is a it's based on resident enrollment headcount in buildings, meaning residential resident students in Gil Montague buildings. And it's a one year look. So it's grabbed the the year is the prior school year. So for FY24, it was enrollment as of FY23. Pioneer Valley's operating assessment methodology is the second one. It's a similar methodology, but it's a five year average of the resident enrollment headcount. So that would be for the, the enrollment five years captured would be from the prior school year and the four years that preceded that, average those out and that's the metric that's used. We were also asked to look at a one year look of foundation enrollment, a five year average of foundation enrollment, one year of required district contribution. And the sixth one was a methodology of the consultants choosing and we chose to go with a five-year average of the required district contribution um, for multiple reasons. The first one being that um, we've worked with other districts in Western Massachusetts, and that was a methodology that they focused on, and we, we thought it made a lot of sense. Um, and also, generally, we like to see averaging over multiple years just to avoid swings. So, you know, Gil Montague's a one-year look resident enrollment. Perhaps there, there are somewhat wild swings associated with that. Maybe the assessments go up and down a little bit because of that, it's noticeable. Whereas with a five-year average, it's a little bit of a smoothing process. You may not see the, the ups and downs quite as much. The asterisks here represent an alternative assessment methodology. It's either statutory, a methodology is either statutory or Alternative statutory means that the first step in the assessment calculation is the required district contribution. And then whatever is left over after that is assessed using the metric. This, in this case, it's a one year resident enrollment for Gil Montague, five years for Pioneer Valley. For the alternative, there is no there is no required district contribution as the first step. So for assessment methodologies three through six here, that's the way we did it. We did not do require district contribution as the first step down. We just assess all of the amount to be assessed using the methodology that's list, listed here. And here are the results. These tables were in the report. Um, five town district is the top table, six town, the bottom. Um, for the five town district, the Warwick number is the same. That's what, that's what is spent on school district today, all the way across. So it doesn't change or remains its own district in a five town district. So that number is the same, but you can see the other towns, they all, all the, all the um, assessment totals change for the different towns as you go left to right. So current would be what the towns are currently assessed or what they were assessed for FY24. Um, number one, is the first methodology on the prior slide. That was Gil Montague's methodology. Number two is the second one on the prior slide, Pioneer Valley's. Three is foundation enrollment, a one-year look. Four is a five-year average of foundation enrollment. Five is a one-year look at required district contribution. And six is a five-year average of required district contribution. 
And in the Stitch Town district at the bottom, you can see that Warwick's does change. So in that run, we are assuming that Warwick is part of the dis of the combined district, therefore um, showing that their costs would go down. They wouldn't have as high a cost as, as high of just uh, high of as high of cost as they do today. And then the final slide is a similar one, but we're showing percentage changes as opposed to dollars. So what this is is it would be a com a comparison of what the assessment is for each of the scenarios, one through six, compared to what it is currently or in FY24. And this was not in the report, just so oh, you're what right. I asked, Matt, then I don't remember that being in the report. Are we... Yeah, this, <laughs> this was something that we compiled today and got into the slide. Oh, thanks for doing that, because we talked about that yesterday. So thanks, yeah, that's helpful. And the final slide is just our Q&A slide as a wrap up. Um, our website is here, as well as the planning board's website is here. And we're happy to take any questions, comments at this time. Thank you. So we want to go back to the full screen. Where would you like me to go, Al? No, I, I just see like four people on here. When you when you reduce oh, you want me oh, to well wait, yeah, wait, let's, wait. let's stop yeah. sharing for now. We can go back to it if we need to. Yeah. I sent uh, so I, to I would express my ignorance by asking what what did combining the districts do to the level of aid? The level of state aid, you know, we had a when Warwick left Pioneer, we got more in state aid than Pioneer lost because uh, we were apparently more financial needy than the mix of of Pioneer. And Pioneers and Hold Harmless Gill Montague isn't. What what did what happened? What what happened behind the curtain when when these uh, local aid was was run for the district scenarios? So let me answer that. In our prior two reports to you, we had an issue with Pioneer Valley having more base aid than foundation aid. And Gil Montague at the time being a foundation aid community, that the increases in foundation aid for Gil Montague would be absorbed by the excess of base aid over foundation aid in Pioneer Valley. At that point, a letter was written, I think Alan wrote it, to Desi. And to my knowledge, we never got an answer. So on this effort, I asked Rob O'Donnell a simple question. Is it fair to say that if Pioneer Valley and Gil Montague merged that they would each keep the exact amount of state aid that they're getting today, fiscal 24. And Rob answered, yes. So it's neutral for this analysis. Alan, you don't have to write a letter this time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> Can I ask what might be an ignorant question and apologies in advance numbers, lots of numbers on the screen here. Was there a slide that I missed a number to say the total impact as a number across the board? I, and again, I might have might have missed it, but I saw lots of slides with different numbers, pluses and minuses. The total impact for the district in a dollar amount, what was that? Meaning if you were to compare what, what they pay today to what they would pay in a merged district, the cost to operate. Well, so I'm going to preface this as I'm like nine months into a school committee, 10 months in a school committee. And so I, um, I was hoping to get out of here, walk away and say, oh, if we do this, it's positive financially for the district by this much money total. 
Is that not, is that, it was that on a slide that I missed? No, I, I think you had to carry that in your head, but do remember <laughs> or, or know that we did not enter into this planning process to save money. We entered into it to save, uh, you know, educational offerings and not keep just airing things off to make budgets work. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't our intent to try to save money. It's also not our intent to drive us over the cliff with increased uh, yeah. expenses. <laughs> Yeah, Jennifer, I mean, I let me, uh, Jennifer, just uh, kind of uh, approach your question. It's a great question. I think that um, you'd have to uh, uh, preface that with it depends on which scenario um, that you were looking at, whether you were looking at, you know, uh, the, the head count in the first one and the second one, the uh, uh, five year average, the foundation enrollment, which isn't the head count. And so every time you run the numbers as they did to generate different assessments, it, it came out uh, different for the towns. Some towns went up, some towns went down. Um, and so it's, it's, it's. I don't think Jennifer's because... talking about assessments though. I think she's talking about. Overall yeah. Activity. Yes. So... Overall impact financially. I think that again, apologies if I'm the only one with the question, I can take it offline. Well, uh... Well, I would, I, I would say, Jennifer, that uh, it, it's the calculation that you that's um, you can't really make because the district uh, merge district is not it doesn't exist. So when you, you can't just add the two. But I mean, you could try to add the two budgets and say, well, are they going to come out ahead? Um, and the the reality of that is, um, as Mark said, which I think was interesting, um, because that was not what we were told. A year and a half ago, or two years ago, when we ran the numbers, was that they're now saying that uh, aid would be neutral, that we wouldn't lose aid. Um, so, what whether or not that puts us into hold harmless? But remember, you you can't really compare, you know, a district that isn't really formed um, with the overall numbers in terms of if you combine them, you know, like it, it's not apples to apples because if you combine them, they're a new district. If mm. even the same, they're two separate districts. You see what I mean? Yeah, it's apples and oranges, but you definitely can compare them. And and Warwick ventured off into into our endeavor based on uh, modeling that these same consultants did for us and that Desi did on the uh, aid. So I mean, we're going to save about three hundred thousand on central office, but it's going to drive up. I mean, and this is all on worst case scenario. It's going to drive up. Uh, health insurance costs by what was it? Yeah, it's on the screen now. Four hundred thousand. Yeah, I sorry, yeah. I was I, I hadn't quite and finished. Then, then there's a piece. There's a that. piece for the <laughs> teachers' wages, assuming that we have to, you know, rise to the higher common denominator, and that's going to increase uh, wages for teachers by three hundred thousand, so or something like that. So yeah, you can you can say, but but then we'd want to pitch in that uh, it's not apples for apples. We're actually able to hold things together and not and not be uh, cutting off flesh every okay. year. Yeah, yeah I, was just, I, was just, I was just gonna finish with just saying, if you want if you want a number to compare in that way, it's the 295,967, okay. the total yeah. adjustment, yeah. Which is on the screen, but which that's is the also- worst, Which is the worst case scenario. Yeah, yeah. If, if the health insurance goes in the other direction, then this could end up being a cost savings, but we have it as a cost increase right now for that reason. Uh, and it's probably a good time to note, because I don't remember if you said this before, that in this uh, analysis, you did not back out uh, the health insurance savings that you would achieve by central office staff being uh, yeah. reduced. That Those people are still in, in this analysis. So there'd be some savings to health insurance with those employees being backed out. Is that, that correct, Matt? Yeah, that's correct. Alan? Yeah. Uh, yes. I, I have just a quick question. Everybody talked about how uh, none of the teachers' salaries would go down and so forth. So I guess my question would be, is the same thing going to be true about the health insurance plans, that you would never transition to a plan that offered less benefits uh, than another? I would say no. No in which direction? No, 
And no, I, I think it should be negotiated and, and, and health insurance continues to be all the time. I would note that Pioneer does not even follow the teacher contract, uh, which has for over 10 years said that uh, Pioneer pays 75% of the uh, HMO plan. And if you want the PP, whatever, PPL. we pay. But I discovered that five years ago. And legal counsel said, doesn't matter what the contract says. Your practice was this. You can't change it. But in a merged district, I would say we ought to be talking about it. Um, Hampshire in, in, uh, the Hampshire Insurance Group is a pretty good benefits manager, and it's in Blue Cross, and it really should be considered. They bought All me right, a so hip so far. Yeah, and, and we could speculate uh, for a long time on the health insurance. The bottom line is when you do negotiate, and, and, and David has pointed out this is a negotiating factor, the parties are looking at what they have now for benefits and then uh, and wanting to maintain them. And so uh, that's always a position that uh, is at the table during negotiations. So our role is not to negotiate, but to you know simply understand that um, that these are these numbers were to generate uh, what assessments might look like, and there's a lot of <laughs> other factors that you know would come into to play here. Um, Matt had mentioned about the retirees, and because of GIC, and it's uh, my understanding is when you're in there, it's hard to switch plans or or uh, you know as a as an individual, the retirees that are in that plan. Uh, would likely, you know, continue, uh, probably continue in the plan. I think the business administrators kind of concluded it's it's um, a, a, it's not worth doing all the calculations for that because it would be a probably be a wash. Am I, um, Matt? I, is that accurate? Would you say? Yeah, we we checked in with district staff on that. Um, we found it tricky to try and project what might happen with retirees and start asking questions around that. And we're mm. recommended not to focus on retirees, to focus on active employees only. Does does the um, Gilmore hey, insurance- David, David, let, let, uh, let's let Karen ask her question, okay? And then we'll go to you, Karen. Okay, yeah, I'm one of those retirees. So <clears throat> of course I'm interested in not losing my access to my GIC choice there. But I also had um, another question. In calculating the combined salary scales, did you take into consideration longevity payments for people at the top of the pioneer scale? We Above, like at 20 years or 25 years, if you're with the district, you get an extra bump. So we did talk about longevity, but we didn't factor in any changes related to it. We just assumed that it would continue on in the manner that it is today. They so, totaled about $25,000, I think, uh, Karen, on the uh, longevity piece uh, for people that were getting that. So we just focused on salaries, what the base salary are, what the base salary would be for the different teachers, not longevity. Mm -hmm. We assume longevity would stay the same. Okay. Thank you. So I'm aware that changing um, self-insurance situations comes with it um, a gap period, a no man's land period where you have, where, where the employer has a lot of exposure. And I ran into this when trying to cut costs at Pioneer looked at moving um, Pioneer's insurance from the Hampshire Insurance Group to Maya, who was offering more favorable premiums. And what I found out was that, you know, you have, so you have a date, July 1, you go flipping from one to the other insurance. Anybody who has been getting uh, insurance benefits under the old plan that continues to be seen. So if I had that hip replacement, and I was still there. I had complications. I'm not insured by the old plan. And I'm not insured by the new plan. And we were going to have to set set aside an unknown amount of money to be that group insurer. 
So I know that the Hampshire Insurance Group is a self-insurance pool, it is the GIC, is the other side as well. Because this will be an expense that we'll, we'll have to reckon with um, if this comes to pass and we try to merge two unlike insurance groups. At least, you know, one or the other will put us in that um, state. Well, I'm not uh, convinced we would be in that state, but I'm sorry to hear, David, you ran into that. No, it's a fact, Alan. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. It, it has something to do with um, claims made versus what's the other kind of insurance? There's claims made versus maybe something that the Abrams group or somebody could investigate if this looks like it might happen because it was quite a wrench, quite a monkey wrench. All right, are there other uh, financial questions? I just want to reiterate that this is all just a moment in time and it's all subject to collective bargaining. So nothing is solid. So as you go out and talk about this with your colleagues and peers and townsfolk, that just needs to be reiterated that it's all subject to collective collective bargaining. So all this minutia is a big unknown. And that's the only thing we can say for sure. Greg? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. It is a big unknown, but yeah, it's, a, it's all we can do is is project looking backward and and taking what we know and, and projecting forward. I was just going to make a comment that the uh, the percentages at the end are, are really helpful. Uh, if you're looking for like a, a political sort of feasibility of what are the chances that this might pass, I think, you know, you can quickly look and see if you start getting into double digits for any one town going up, um, yeah. you got a you got a good <laughs> likely that's not going to pass in the town and therefore the thing will not pass. So right. you kind of look into the columns of like uh, what I can see is in column two and three. Uh, I mean, it, where you're seeing, um, you know, the least amount of impact. Uh, I mean, Warwick goes down in all cases, so I would think Warwick would want to join this new district regardless. Um, but but if you're looking at, uh, you know, uh, impacts of increases in assessments, um, you know, two and three are not that bad um, in terms of what you would be asking a, a particular town. So, you know, is there ways to set up a district agreement that could smooth out those so that maybe the the cost savings for some towns would would maybe not be quite so great and bring down the increases in other towns. I think that's a potential when you begin to start to set up your district agreement. Those things can be negotiated. So um, you know, yeah, I was kind of pleasantly surprised that there were a couple of of scenarios that didn't play out to be uh, where one, town, you know, blew up, as you can see in some of them, or it's upwards of 20%, but, um, but, you know, it looks okay. It, you know, it, it, I was pleasantly surprised to see a couple of columns where it's not so bad and that politically, okay. I think you could potentially, if all towns wanted to, to go for it, that they could get over the finish line. That's it. You know, keep in mind that number two is statutory and number three is alternative. Right. Right. Yeah. Raina? So I just wanted to clarify. So the the different assessment scenarios would be dependent on, you know, there's there are there's no one way to, to calculate assessments, and so it would depend on the, what the district agreement was, what formula you would use to for the assessments. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Other questions for Matt and uh, Mark. Why they're here, uh, Greg? You want to talk about the next steps? Yeah, I was just going to ask: Are these the same materials that would be presented to the select boards and finance committees? Is this the format that it would take? Yes. Yeah. If we, um, if we're okay with moving forward, and uh, I mean, I don't have any issues with the presentation. I think the, you know, to. To Renee's point, um, you know, the select boards and finance can be, no, these are projections. So, you know, anything can change when you start 
to uh, get into the minutia and, and start doing hypotheticals in terms of what could possibly be a, within the negotiations of a district agreement. So, um, but it does give us something to work with. Um, so if we're okay with that, we could vote to, to move ahead with uh, the report as presented and the slides as presented. And you know, we, if if Matt and Mark want to make a, some adjustments or amendments to the slides, um, you know, if they see something they'd like to improve on, um, just to send them to us. We, I, I think we can say, you know, with approve with um, with potential uh, amendments to it as needed. If they see something, you know, obviously, if it's something that really changes our um, how we feel about the slides, then we could take another vote. But I think we we should allow them the room to be able to to make changes to it um, if they see something that's you know maybe a little off or whatever. I so, have one suggestion. Yeah, that we run a scenario based on the lower um, fringe benefit costs, healthcare costs, which would change the gross amount by uh, around 800,000. Right, so you would wind up with the savings about 500,000. Which would then lower the assessments and yeah. lower those percentages. That's a good idea, Mark, because that would give us a, a, a low and a high range then. Yep. Really nice, yeah. But I would say um, we don't have to come back for a vote on that. I think that's that's just additional financial data that, uh, that uh, you can do in the presentation. And and you know add that into the presentation and maybe an addendum to the report. We we are planning a meeting with the uh, boards, uh, finance committees, select boards on November fourteenth, and um, at six thirty. Uh, one of the things, Greg, we need to do is to um, uh, clarify the time because in the letter to them it nailed down the date, but we didn't have a time in there. So if uh, six thirty sounds good to this group. And they have a little travel time. Uh, we can send out something to that. Uh, we also need to, because I, I was thinking we'd accept the report, um, this report, with the understanding that uh, there may, uh, to, in this case, uh, it would be amended to run uh, another set of assessments. And that way, um, what goes forward on the 14th uh, is... Um, you know the the finance uh, the uh, planning board has seen that was the important part for me is to make sure the planning board saw this before anyone else had a chance to review it ask questions so you would have a heads up and know uh what was going to be presented on uh, november um 14th the um uh so and also by the way why i'm on that we need to send um the report Greg, to as we talked earlier, to the chairs of the uh, to the school committees, uh, we should send it to and obviously to the town officials and so forth, was Selectman Finance. We should probably send it also to uh, to to Irving, since they've been very active and a participant in our on our uh, planning board, uh, so that they get a copy as well, and they they may decide to come and listen to it. Um, so that would be the next step in terms of uh, the, the next meeting. And we're, we are not going to schedule that as a planning board meeting. You certainly can attend and we could have a quorum, but we're not going to be conducting any business. Any, any members that are there, you know, are there to, to listen to what town officials have to say and what, what their questions are. Um, that, however, the towns will probably have, and I will ask, each town to uh, call their meeting to order because they will probably have quorums for their select board and finance committees. So Mark, that's how things will start off is to have everyone uh, call their respective meetings to order. And then we would, I'll go over the ground rules of how we'll proceed. The meeting will be recorded and we're going to have someone uh, record the minutes uh, for us so that uh, we can get those out um, pretty pretty quickly after the meeting, uh, after we have the meeting, and we'll get that out to um, the, the towns as well. So that's sort of the, the uh, logistics uh, around that. Um, 
So how do people feel about, uh, you know, me entertaining a motion to accept the report that the Abrams group has presented? Karen? I just have one <clears throat> question for my education. What is EQV? Equalized valuation. <laughs> okay. Thank and you. Yeah, and so that skyrocketed when COVID came uh, right. and uh, drove up uh, numbers, including uh, minimum contribution numbers uh, required, yeah. you know, by the town. Right, right, right. No, there's a there's such a lag. I can't. That's just beginning to hit now. But oh. is EQV equalized valuation? What's what's that factor? The state comes through and and says you under assess by. Four uh, percent. It, it goes. It goes into their calculation of of uh, the the town's um, wealth. So it's a it's a part of the aggregate wealth formula. So mm -hmm. part of this EQV. Um, that's like one one column in the uh, in the Chapter seventy formula. The EQV number that is used in the Chapter seventy formula is the LA nineteen form completed by your assessors, adjusted by the state or. What what we say? It's on the LA nineteen completed by your assessors. Hmm. I've just been annoyed forever because the state comes through once a year and they they come up with something. I think they call an EQV. What is it, Michelle? Where they basically judge our ability to follow the law and 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 assess at a hundred percent valuation, and they do this so that. Uh, folks can't just deliberately, you know, lean a little bit poorer and and, and right. compete against other towns. There is the state does something. That's a EQV. That's what I thought. Yep. So that's our assessor's LA nine stuff adjusted by the state for for weight weighted. Doesn't matter. It's, it's detail. I sent a few of you the stuff on on the insurance runout expense. Uh, and you can, I'm on a strange computer, so I, it didn't know many people's email addresses. All right. So, um, how do people feel if I, uh, about making a motion to accept the report that the Abraham's group presented this evening? I so move. Second. All right, uh, I guess I need to do a roll call vote. Uh, Dorinda? Aye. Raina? Yes. Greg? Yes. Renee? Renee, I couldn't hear you. Did you? She's looking on... for her mute button. Okay. All right, she's unmuted, but she's they can't hear you. Yeah. Thumbs up or down? Thumbs okay. up. Okay. <laughs> Michelle? Yes. And Karen? Yes. Deb? Yes. Uh, David? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right, so that's unanimous. And so with that- uh, You missed me. I, I said- Deb. Another Deb. You're two Debs. Oh, there you are. When did you come on, Deb? Um, Like 10 minutes, uh, 20 of seven. Okay, Ten thank minutes you. Late. Maybe no, that's okay. Uh, it, we should just clarify, and and the motion was that accept the report with the addition of the um, uh, the I want I don't want to say best case scenario, but uh, the the other scenario where um, Gil Montague would move to Pioneer's uh, healthcare plan. All right. So what I was uh, saying was that uh, we're recepting this uh, vote. We voted to accept this report as presented. And now the understanding is we're asking the uh, the Abrams group to uh, generate an addendum. So this is, this is an ask that we're doing at this point to them to also run assessments uh, regarding uh, insurance that was going to um, generate a, a different uh, uh, amount to be included and assessed so that's a that's a new ask. An, do you want an addendum or do you want us just to incorporate that into a revised report 
I would put it, I would revise it into the report, please. That yeah. was my motion. Yes. yes. And that's my second. Thank you, David. <laughs> all right. So you, we all set then on that. Um, Mark, will you be able to, and, and Matt, uh, get us that and, and get that to uh, the town officials as a follow-up? Uh, when, when, when would you think you, you might be able to send that to Greg to send that out to everyone as well? Uh, today is Tuesday, maybe by Monday. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. I'll just, yeah, I'll just wait for you to finish that up and then I can send it out to everyone. Thanks. Okay. Okay. That's great. Any well, other it's questions? Pleasure, it's a pleasure to work with you again. Yeah. Nice work. Right, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Nice day, yeah. Mm -hmm. nice. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, are Thank we going to invite Desi to our meeting? They paid for it. <laughs> no, they actually did not pay for it. This uh, was the DOR did. The, the Department of Revenue. Oh. Uh, well, I think we still still should, you know, invite They should have DOR should have come though. They certify your uh, your LA19. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks uh Mark and Matt and we'll uh we'll talk later. Thank you. Thank you. All right, yeah. thank you. Hey nice Dave. Job. Dave Young. Yes. Do you have a moment that um I have to I it's town stuff. <laughs> Bye everyone. We're not Oh, we're not are you leaving? Are you oh, we're oh. not done the meeting? Oh, I, just, oh, I thought we oh, were, we were hoping. Oh, no, 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 no. I was raising my hand cuz Joanne just arrived just as Mark and Matt were leaving. Oh, okay. yeah. I am sorry. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. So, um Town stuff. So, so Joanne, we just uh, reviewed, uh, heard a review of the uh, report that they gave, and I don't know if you were on when um, we had asked or or they had offered to run another set of assessments uh, with insurance going uh, in the other direction. Um, they 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 ran them with a higher the higher um, uh, amount, and uh, so they're going to run them again with a lower amount. And they'll get another, they'll rewrite the report to include that in it. And then we'll send that out to, uh, Greg will send that out to everyone on Monday. Okay. Yeah. The school committee is happening right now too. So that's oh, where okay. I was. Okay. Yo, well, I appreciate I, I, you joining. And Sorry, um, may I interrupt? I, I just sent, I shared the uh, slides with you again, just to make sure you have them. I'm not sure if you were on the original email where I, I shared the slides, but um, anyway, I just, you'll, if you look for them in your email, you'll, you should have uh, a copy of them. Okay. Yeah. I was looking at the, the charts, okay. you know, that had the different scenarios, the different assessments and you know, that that's complicated. <laughs> yeah. 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 They put right, it. In, I, I, I hope Joanne that you'll be able to go to the, uh, November, uh, 14th meeting. I hope that's going to work out where the select boards and finance committees uh, are coming together to hear the presentation and uh, we'll hear what, you know, what their questions are. Yeah, I should be able to be there. That's great. All right. Well, thank you for, for popping in. Okay. All right. You're welcome to stay if you want. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, so the agenda sort of laid out and we already talked about the, uh, the ground rules and so forth. Uh, and I, anyone have any questions about how we're going to format that? Okay, the next thing is uh, public relations uh, and the Facebook update. And I'm hoping we can focus on that for a little bit. Karen? Did you want to go back to the minutes? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Karen. Yes, let me go back to the top of the agenda. Thanks, Karen. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a set of minutes. Um, we'll start with the first set in April, uh, April 18th. Uh, everyone had a chance to review them. Any, any suggestions? I, I got, I did get suggestions from Karen. I made all the changes that she suggested, and so we should be up to date. Uh, I didn't receive any edits from anyone else, so uh, thanks, Karen. They were you're good. welcome. Good edit. Were they primarily um, just clarification? No, a lot of typos in yours, Alan. So just you know. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. When you got to page five. Oh, something went wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> did I? Did we send out the right one? 
Yeah. All right. Did. So um, so we're on April 18th. I'll entertain a motion to approve the April 18th minutes. I move that we approve the April 18th meeting minutes. Second. A sec Who seconded? Dorinda. Dorinda. All right. I'm going to try to do this really quickly. Um, Alan, Ray Alan, you can have them move to accept all all the minutes that are on the agenda. You don't. Oh, have that'd to, be nice. Uh, have, so then, there's the May thirtieth, May thirtieth, and yeah. the September nineteenth. That was a long meeting with a lot of good information. I'll tell you that. <laughs> so, Karen, do you want to amend your uh, your motion? Yes, sure. Um, I move that we um, accept the minutes for April eighteenth, May thirtieth and September 19th with the edits that have been done. Second. Thank you, Dorinda. Any other discussion? Are they? Um, all right, so now we can handle all three. Roll call vote. Greg? Yes. Michelle? Yes. Dorinda? Yes. Deb Pote? Deb is not there at the moment. Raina? Yes. Uh, Renee? Karen? Yeah. Uh, Renee yes. uh, uh, said yes. Uh, yes. Said Deb Loomer? Yep. And David? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. And Joanne is still with us. That's good. Okay. So, and Alan Genevieve is yes. So those minutes pass unanimously. Moving to the next area which is the um, public relations. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Okay. All right. Uh, the Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, Dorinda, you want to take the lead on this, you and Jennifer? Um, should I share, Greg? <clears throat> All right, so not tons has changed since last time. I have the post up, we have four people following. So, you know, soft launch, but, um, I, I wanted to ask what format, so there's the, the big, nice FAQ, but it has um, 33 questions and answers. So, you know, what what um, vision do people have? I don't know about um, how we're gonna present that content. So, so one potential way to present it is, you know, we want images on Facebook. So here I have this image, but I also have the content. Um, pasted so that you can read it that way if it's annoying to read a graphic. So for some people, I imagine it's annoying and some people it, it's probably easier to read the graphic. And then we could sort of have something that's like a link to the full FAQ each time. So maybe we're, we're putting up images for some of these and then we're linking back to the web page for the, the full FAQ, something like that. <clears throat> it looked like there needed to be like a little bit of editing in the FAQ. I don't remember, I saw some um, you know, typos and stuff, but, you know, Karen could give it, give it the look. And d does that make sense? Like, should we, I, I don't know if we should have 33. That's like kind of a, a long thing. Like if we want to choose the top ones that we would want to paste as images or what format, yeah, you know, think, Alan, you can tell me what format you wanted that to take. I would say keep, yeah, do the, do the top sort of what we think would be the, uh, you know the the most asked questions, and then we could have a link in there that uh, points to you know other questions that have been asked, so that we're not you know throwing up thirty something questions where they have to scroll through the feed to find find. Yeah. Them. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, like, uh, okay. Alan had suggested a rollout of some sort. I think you know put a mm -hmm. few up, and then put a few more up, and something like that and a hybrid of what greg said is sounds good to me 
Yeah, I think I had made the comment of um, having something there, but don't put too much out until we have a good audience. Mm -hmm. um, so they don't have to scroll through too many to catch up, one or two teasers. Um, then again, I, I messaged a couple times asking. I hadn't invited anybody. I hadn't even suggested it to anybody because I didn't know where we were. And so um, I think that that is a good strategy. I love, I, by the way, I love the way it looks, Dorinda, and I appreciate the graphic versus not. I'm in the mood for some other time. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's a really, really nice mm -hmm. way to put the information out there. Yeah. Great. So let me back up for a second. Um, so Karen, <laughs> yes, are you willing to uh, go through, <laughs> get to that document to go through it in, um, or anyone else for that matter. And, uh, you know, that that was what I thought was going to be easy was not. Um, that took a while to to think through, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the answers and, and uh, you know, be be accurate and and uh, address the, the question. And also occasionally it was to let them know that um, we had heard them. And although we didn't have an answer, we wanted to make sure they knew that we were thinking about what, you know, what they had said. Right. No answer would be like, well, you didn't even listen to us. So <laughs> that's why some of them talked a little bit around things. But th the point was to, yeah, we did listen to you. We did hear you. And we we want to give you a response. Mm -hmm. so if someone wants to, you know, edit those, I am so appreciative of that because that would be helpful. And then um, I agree with uh, Jennifer think she came up with originally rolling out certain things this would be an idea that we could roll some of these out I don't know how you do the teaser about coming next you know some more uh, Q and A's uh, regarding you know a merger or however but just sort of keep that each time there's a post or something there's another a few more and then it if if they want to I guess maybe have it linked to a total document well I was thinking what we can do is I I can set up a another um, page on our website that is frequently, you know, frequently asked questions. So they can point to that. Um, and then I think it'd probably be wise now, once we have this, this uh, financial report to update the reports page and maybe add a page. It's just, you know, most, the, the most current and relevant reports and then have rename the page that we put the reports on the older ones, just, you know, past reports or something. Cause some of those are outdated at this point. So we want to kind of refresh what we have on the, on the website and then be able to point to it on Facebook so that we're not trying to clog up Facebook with. <clears throat> Same information. Yeah. Yeah. Just too much detail too. People want to know like that just, I mean, you, you know, those who want to dive into uh, the assessments and all the all the minutia of the data can do that on the on the website, but that's not something you're going to post on Facebook. <laughs> so let me ask a question about the mechanics of Facebook. If is it such that if someone wanted to ask a question, and I'm not talking about a live back and forth, you know, thing that we're doing, but if 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 someone were to ask a question for us that we could then answer as a follow up. Is it set up like that, or do we do we not want it set up like that? Because um, what happens if additional questions come out? What 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 is the thing? I would say the additional an any answers to any co answers that we have are on the website. If, we, if it's not on the website, we don't have the answer. Is that implied? Well, okay. they they can ask a question, but we have to direct them to to email us. Yeah. We do not want questions mm -hmm. or comments on Facebook page. No. People, you know, will take the liberty to tell us what they think. Right. And we don't have a staff that is sitting by the phone or sitting by the computer ready to answer the next question that comes uh, you in. Can't, you can't police your Facebook page. You just got to turn those things off. Yeah. Um, Looks great. Yeah, it's impressive. Okay. So are we... People feel ready, um, this great work that you guys have done to uh, take a vote to have it go live, have it go public. We we good to go on that? And Jennifer, you can send out your things to 100 people to invite them to go see it. <laughs> I'm excited. That's my big contribution. <laughs> That's my big work. 
<laughs> having friends. And I just, I feel like for Dorinda is on point for um, content, right? And so my, n not fear for her, but just make sure that there was, you know, she has four posts that she has ready. So she's not trying to think of content. So are we, Dorinda, do you feel prepped or do we have maybe a first month worth of Monday's posts to put out? Or do we think about any cadence that way that's not um, just too consuming for Dorinda? Well, there's 33 of these FAQs. So yeah, I would, I would just, uh, why don't, why don't we um, figure out in the next day or two what the, you know, what I think the easiest questions and answers to digest for the public are and what we think would be, those will be mostly the the, the most, I'm sorry, the most frequently asked ones as well. You know, things like transportation, uh, you know, it may be some, some, we, I, let's go through the, the questions that are there. That's probably the easiest way. This most of me just hypothetically going off the top of my head. So, I mean, that could be you guys looking through and, you know, it, it just doesn't take any expertise. I just, you know, what, what comes to your mind when you read the questions like, oh yeah, I, I can see people asking that question a lot. So maybe start with those. And then I will get the, the full list of questions and answers um, put on our webpage and an FAQ, um, a new, a new page that, that they can, you can just link to it. So that you're not, you know, just regurgitating the same stuff over and over. <laughs> um, the, in his cover letter, uh, Alan said that he took the liberty of answering for all of us and please let him know if we agreed or disagreed or something like that. Because um, I, I think we should maybe have discussion about that now before we yeah. send it on i agree if anybody has any questions i would like to go to the one about would it be homogeneous or tracked because that's always been a thing for me i mean heterogeneous or tracked yeah um I still think about the um, history of heterogeneous grouping at Pioneer and that has been our identity. It is part of our um, mission statement, our statement of who we are. And um, that is not to say that students don't have choices as they get to the higher grades, but those are open to anybody who wants them. There is nothing tracked about any of the secondary school, middle or high school at Pioneer. Anybody can take AP, anybody, but we don't have honors or general, those types of things don't exist. And I definitely feel that the faculty believes it shouldn't be in the middle school. There should be no quote tracking classes are small enough that you don't need to do that. Well, uh, and and I don't disagree with you. You're, you're not wrong no. in that. I um I guess knowing how the middle school model, the true middle school model is set up, that that, that doesn't exist, Karen. So I guess I that wasn't in my mind when I was answering that okay. question. Yeah, um, but it does say the best interests of students to have the opportunity to sign up for courses of interest to them, I don't think would apply very much to middle school. So you might want to differentiate there and say, as they proceed to the higher grades. Well, um, to your point, I think I think <clears throat> if you added a sent the the opening sentence would be a middle school in a middle school model. Uh, mm -hmm. still are never tracked in a middle school model you know the, the uh, um, something to the effect that that basically says you know a middle school model is uh, uh, is is open to um, all students interests and yes. you know addressing them just mm -hmm. and, yeah. then, and, and then so, move to an, at the high school level and then and then a statement if you'd like to uh, generate a different uh, response to that, I, I would welcome it. Um, I, 
I know that in speaking with the staff, when we met them, we had them together at the, <laughs> the Pioneer in the summertime. Mm -hmm. um, this really, this came from them uh, for the, you know, generally speaking, yes. and they said, you know, some groups, you know, they end up being um, such that uh, the, the kids that have an interest in the honors or, you know, whatever, the, the advanced courses, it just ended up that way. You know, I'm, I shouldn't say advanced. It ended up no. in courses of interest. Um, right, right. And so it was by natural selection of students. That's correct. Right. So, um, so they, they, I, I went back and, and looked at some notes and thought, you know, what, how did they talk about this? Cause they brought this up and, um, this is, this is what I had recalled them talking about that, uh, mm -hmm. they didn't see a problem because it would be blended together. And they, I think, I think they were thinking there would be some honors classes um, and there would be many courses that, and anyone could sign up for it, um, but they were distinguishing that there were some of these. So I don't know. Um, um, honors but, is tracking. Yeah, yeah, it is. Because they, they don't get to select what yeah. class they're in. And um, that's not true to, I mean. Yeah. Maybe a better, maybe a better answer, Karen, is something along these lines, because when we brought the staff together, they did not seem to think that if they put their heads together and talked about this, that, that it could be, you know, they, they'd come up with something. Who's going to determine this is the staff? So, I mean, there'd be a transition plan. And part of that would be the, a big part of that would be the um, curriculum coordinators and the teachers and the content areas coming together and, and talking about this. So however this ends up is going to be generated by, you know, the where it should be with the teachers uh, coming up with, with this. So maybe a question around that is presently, here's how Pioneer has it. Here's Gil Montague has a, a blend. And um, ultimately uh, the staff, the, the combined staff will determine uh, uh, what this is. I mean, I, I don't know how else to address it. Well, I'm open to suggestions. We, we can also just, we can, we can just do, you know, the top 15 for now and sort of see, you know, we know people want to know uh, where the school is located. We know we want, they want, um, they want to know about buses. So there's a few like sort of top 10, top 15, that um like what's gonna happen to warwick that kind of thing so so maybe put like just have those at first and then figure out which are the mo more controversial and we can sort of work on those answers later yeah so maybe way. what's the best way should, like the should we submit feedback to karen or to alan or K karen slash alan is the best way well let's get to, i think that's a good suggestion let's continue on in terms of are there any others that people think that they're um i don't know not i don't want to say accurate but not worded they're not clear and um, um looking i'm looking through i'm sorry <laughs> yeah, no problem takes me a moment yeah, there's there are um, some typos, but I can let you know what those are. Um, okay. Yeah. Separately, I think it's the M I A A, not the M I I A. Yeah, it's M I I A. What I don't have that. You have M I I A. I think it is M I. Um... No, the athletic association for the state. It is yeah. F A A M I A A Massachusetts and Scholastic Athletic Association. M I A A. Okay. Anyway, um, so if you could uh, do the edits and get them to um, 
get him to Greg because he has the he has the document in a shared. Does thing. he have an an editable document? Because it's kind of yeah. Tough. He okay. can share the shared documents because I when I had done it, I had shared it with him and okay. he reviewed it. And now mm -hmm. he can get it to you and share it with you. Okay, good. Okay, but for the full group, other were there any others? So we identified one other than typos. I mean, yeah. content. Were there any right. that were content. other, just content, any other content issues? Mm -hmm. I feel like the question, how would we ensure we don't lose what we hold most dear and valuable is, is just too vague. Um, Cause that's just like a life question. How, you know, like, <laughs> it's, it's not context-based. I agree. Yeah. The answer is mm -hmm. fine and everything. It just seems it. Ask the question a little differently, maybe. Oh, yeah. I don't feel like that's yeah. like a, a frequently asked question necessarily. Yeah, they, they they it was a question that was in Mary's report mm -hmm. that I, that someone had asked. Mm -hmm. And what I did was I went back three reports. I started going through and picking out anything that was a question or asked for clarification. So all mm -hmm. of these are almost almost verbatim questions. Um and I was surprised there were as many as there were. <laughs> but oh my god, is this going to end? Um <laughs> Yeah, you did a great job. No, thank you. Yeah, you did. That's a lot of work. Yeah. So Karen, you'll you'll take care of the typos and um someone who's gonna identify. I mean, do, do we have a minute to just quickly look through it? People could just say, I think this is this should be on our top 10. And we can roll out five and five more. That put okay. a lot of questions. All right, thanks, Deb. Sorry. Good luck in the tournament. Hmm. That's great. Are we losing quorum? Does that matter? Uh, no, I'm not losing quorum. We no. still have it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, no one else go. <laughs> uh -huh. Jennifer left. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Still have a quorum. Two, six, eight. Okay. Um. I mean, I I'm comfortable with leaving it up to uh, Jennifer and Dorinda to, you know, if you mm -hmm. want to pick what you think are the 10, 10 questions to roll out first. Karen's gonna uh, do some more thinking about the yeah. ho heterogeneous and homogeneous. I think it is important, Karen, to point out that is not part of a middle school model. You know, it's it's all mm. heterogeneous. Um, so, uh, but I don't even know if people know that. That question was asked a couple of times by staff. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I hope parents know what those words mean. Mm -hmm. Um. Maybe in parentheses, Karen, just be uh, uh, sort of uh, define what that means. Okay. You know, all <clears throat> students together or or all abilities, you know, however you want to define that so people understand that. Yeah. And um, when, when do you need this? Because I've got two meetings, Thursday night and Friday, I'm taking off for New Mexico. Well, you can <laughs> share, share, uh, Greg will share it with you right away. Um, and I that, uh, Alan, you have it on your drive and you, I'm still trying to find it because you shared it with me. And then I, I actually edited it and rewrote a bunch of it. So, but I can't, I, for some reason can't find it. So you might want to check your drive. All right. I'll check that and, and, uh, we'll get it to Karen and, um, Karen, at least, at least do the, your typo, uh, revisions and then yeah. uh think of an answer to this because you could start you could just type in answer to this because this is the no we need to get you one for the typos and make it easy for you so we'll yeah. we'll follow that up so if, our, you, if you have the ability to word search i can just point out some words that need fixing okay 
that would right. work. Yeah. All right. Um, so we all set and uh, thumbs up for uh, consensus by consensus that we'll we'll be using this to uh, to send in our our um, our Facebook page. And I would like to take a formal vote to uh, to kick off our um, Facebook page like uh, tomorrow <laughs> or or in the immediate future, Dorinda, as soon as you're ready to to do that, I'd like to authorize you to do that. Yeah, well, it's it's already public. It's just a matter of um, Jennifer pointing people this way. And I think she sort of had that in mind as she signed off. So I think it's happening already. Oh, OK. I, I didn't know if we were uh, we were taking a vote to make it go live. It is live. Yeah, it's yeah. live the whole time. It just only has four followers, so no one cares. So like not yet. I think OK, I'm so, that's so great. Are, are you calling it Six Town Regional Planning? board or what what's the name six town regionalization planning board yeah okay. that's who we are that's yeah I, yeah <laughs> all right so we took care of that we took care of number two and the target gate for dosing I, I guess that's already happened which is good um i would i was going to ask jennifer about i liked her idea about having uh some kind of a flash card so dorinda maybe you could comment on this you know, just something to pass out that had the QR codes to point people in that direction and with a, just a little statement or something about who we are. We could put them around town uh, at different locations. Uh, people could pass them out at meetings or at, you know, uh, town events. Um, how do how do we make that happen? We could just use um, like business cards. Makes sense. Maybe like, you know, put up a little stand at libraries or something like that or I don't know, on bulletin boards. Now I and... have a bunch of uh, three by five index cards um, that we could put to good use if that's easier, or do you, are you thinking something smaller that we'd have to purchase? Um, well, I don't know. Can you print on those index cards? Do you have like? I can't, that was my question. Joanne, you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. By yeah. the way, Joanne, I figured like business cards are probably cheap, right? Can you get a bunch for like 20 bucks? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Joanne, you still there? I, yes, I, was, I am. Um, two things. You can probably have it. business cards made at Staples or you can order them online from um, Vista print we've used. So we could do a purchase order. Okay. If you need business cards. All right, and and how 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 many would you suggest, Dorinda or Joanne? What are we thinking? I don't, well, I don't know exactly what you're doing with them. So, okay, so there's going to be uh, something on them that uh, about the what the planning board is, and there will be a QR code to direct them to the uh, the web page or to the Facebook page. And so you would just put them around town. For people to pick up. I mean, they're kind of little. Or pass they, maybe you do postcards. Pass yeah. them out at these meetings. Pass them out. Yeah, pass them out meetings, pass them out at town events. My daughter, who is a chemistry and biology teacher at Monty Tech, and I'm at her house, just handed me a note. And she said that your local vocational school does business cards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we could probably print them here too, but you know, okay. they'd be more professional at Vista Print or Staples having them done. Okay. And you have budget, so we could do that. Yeah. And get them done. Vista Print's pretty quick. So, Dorinda, do you want to work with Jennifer to put on what what that would be on a business card, or or some other volunteers here, and then we'll um. And, and get the QR code on it somehow. I don't know. Yep. Okay. Yep. Not a problem. Right. Do that. So so then uh and then the invoice uh if you send it to Greg she'll get it to or if you have Joanne's uh email you can send the invoice to Joanne. Is would that work for you, Joanne? Right. If you send us what you would like made up, then we can do a purchase order and submit it with the purchase order. Then okay. we'll get the invoice when they come in. You can pick them up. All right, perfect. 
Sounds good. And, yeah, it sounds good. Thanks, Joanne. The other thing, Joanne, is um, uh, before you joined us, uh, we're going to hire uh, uh, someone to take the minutes on, on November uh, uh, 14th so we can get them out right away. Uh, uh, she does minutes for boards of selectmen and school committees and stuff. So uh, we think it's really important that we just get that done. Okay. And they checked with the ethics commission to see if you can pay them. Oh, they're not part of the, they, they actually do them for orange and others. They're not part of the planning board at all. They're totally they, independent. One of our, do they work for a municipality? Uh, I don't know. They might work for the town of orange. Right. They should, they should call. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'll ask, I'll ask her. Okay. Thank you. I didn't think of that. I didn't realize that even if you're like three towns away, you still have to check. Hmm. Um, all right. Any other things on the, what we're trying to roll out for uh, Facebook? I shared the Q&A. I, I finally found them. Uh, so I shared the Q&A document with everyone. So Karen, you can edit it, Will. <laughs> yeah. And Raina, while I have you, would this be helpful um, to, we'll get it all to you. Will you, do you think you'd be giving it to Joanne to send it out to members in terms of the uh, report? Did she, Greg, did, did uh, Raina, did you get Mary's report? I don't remember getting it as the chair. I mean, I received it. Okay. You know, when you sent it to members of this committee, but um, I don't recall it coming through for the first report. Like yeah, Mary's the, the report that Mary recently did and reported. We were going to send that to the school committee chairs as well. No, I, I didn't say. I mean, we we sent it to. I mean, we have we have a school committee member on every for every town. They should they should bring it to their own school committee. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. There's no, no need to send it out again. I mean, okay. you, know, you got like six members. <laughs> but the but the financial report will send out to just the chairs, right? Well, I mean, we can. I mean, it I feels redundant to me because, I mean, Rain is already a part of this group and she's the chair. Um, right. Who's chair of, of Gil Montague now? Is it still Jane or? Yep. A, yes. Yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, our our committee members should be bringing this to their, to their school committees anyway, but. I know, but for protocol purposes, I think it's appropriate for the chairs okay. of at least the school committees to get it. Okay. Um, in addition to, you know, our members. Um, okay. All right. I think. Uh, what? Oh, and the last thing is uh, what about the survey? Uh, Greg, I, I know that you have set up a potential meeting tentative for November 8th with with uh, Vernon. Have you heard back from them? Yeah, it's a go. Yeah. I only got 45 minutes, so it's just going to be the same presentation we've we've done. And just it's just to give them bring them into the loop as far as what's what's happening. It's not going to be. You know, I'm not going to okay. talk about the financials because that's not really in their purview. OK. Um, and then the the survey that we asked parents, we had talked about maybe having that somehow available to people. I think that's the last major thing we that we would try to figure out. Um, we, the, the thinking was once people had had a chance to uh, get this information on our website, to be directed to it, uh, go visit the Facebook page, we would then maybe have a survey that. Uh, they could, if they're visiting our website later, we could then direct them to do the survey. Dorinda, is that what, how that would work? What survey are we talking about, Alan? We, we said the survey that we had sent out, we had done previously to parents who completed it. Some hadn't had a lot of information to go on. Uh, we had talked about um, giving people an opportunity to take that once they had a chance to look at information on the web page, on our website, and so forth. And we, toward the end of this process, we would um, do that again. That, at least that's something we talked about doing. 
I I thought, but I you know I remember the conversation where Deb Loomer is like we're we're done. We're you know we've surveyed the the public as much as we we can, and I mean we're sort of getting to the end of now. We're just disseminating the information that we have. Um, I mean we you know we've done two years of surveying as as much as we can. Um, I mean I just don't know the 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 problem I have with that is when you do another survey, then what are we going to do another report? And incorporate news, you know, survey data into a report, um, because that's kind of what you need to do. So I'm I'm a little torn. I mean, that's why one of the reasons why Deb was kind of adamant, like, we're done. You know, we have to okay. say enough's enough that we get the right right now, what we're doing is getting the the information out there of all, you know, of the most current information we have regarding the financials, regarding, you know, the meetings we had and where we surveyed staff and faculty and right. you know all that is that you know they we've given lots of chances to survey so okay i i i just brought it up because it's something we talked about we never really uh, drew a conclusion are people all right with uh, we've done enough of that sounds yeah. good we can always <laughs> do it later if we decide we need to do okay all right no thank timeline. you yep, yeah thank you greg all right, um, calendars for next meeting, if we've covered everything on this agenda. Um, I did have down here November 7, in case we needed to do something before um, our December, I mean, our November 14th meeting. Um, do, Dorinda, do you feel as you're in, in as you're working on the Facebook page, would you like to keep a, that date open to if there's um, a need to review things or answers questions you might have? What do you think? I can always just do sort of small group review, non-quorum review. Okay. I, you know, I, I, I would Aaron for the editor. <laughs> I request, Alan, that we, we wait till after the 14th. Um, I think that we need to let our select boards and FinComs uh, take a look at the the report and the spreadsheets. Uh, well, you know, that I think is more useful as far as gathering information and then having us come back and see if there was any, you know, because now we're moving into the realm of all we've, we've got all this data, both financial, both educational. What What kind of reaction are we getting from our, in quotes, political leaders, because the next step is really a political thing. It's not, you know, if we if we decide to take a vote and recommend or not recommend, right, um, it's going to move into the, the 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 political realm and discussions. And if we vote to, you know, move forward, right. we've got to stick agreement. All so, right. so why don't we look at December, uh, November twenty eighth, and December fifth, if we could pencil those in. Was it November what? Sorry. November 28th. Okay. December 5th. And I. Uh, uh, let's see. 28th is a Tuesday. I think that works. I think we're going to have a special town meeting on the 27th. Mm -hmm. so. That so, does not work for me, but that's okay. Which one? 28th. I have a budget make, budget subcommittee. How about December 5th? Can you make that? Yep. All right. So let's do both of those. Karen, I saw your mouth moving, but you're on mute. Did, were you talking to us? You're still on mute. I'm at the same meeting as Michelle on the 28th. <laughs> oh. Uh, and that's a Tuesday? Yeah. Yeah, the 5th, I, the 5th I think, works out okay, because... Pioneer has their school committee meetings on the second and fourth, right? Tuesdays? Right. Thursdays. Yeah. Oh, Thursdays. I'm sorry. Okay. How about yeah. the 29th? Yeah. The Wednesday, the 29th. Is that possible? No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So far. Oh, sorry. No. But that's okay. It's not you budget can't... subcommittee, is it? No. <laughs> Okay. All right. All I'm right. So for a few days, but you can do it. do it on the 29th. If you want. All right. So the 20, uh, the 29th and, and December 5th. 
All right. Thank you for hanging in there. It's 822. You know, I don't like to go more than an hour and a half. Motion um, to adjourn. Not a good work. Thank you. <laughs> Second. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye. Right, thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. You right. too. Yeah. Bye. Oh, Raina. Oh, I didn't catch her. Oops. <laughs> I wanted her to. I have to call her. <laughs> yeah. All right. Bye. Hey.